is the Glass Cannon Network. When the dune hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's Amore. Amore. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I uh, never met a pun I didn't like. This is wow. Inherit the Sand, episode three. It's my three. favorite uh, Dune Martin song. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> good. Oh, you and I are going to get along just fine. <laughs> Dune, that was Dune Martin. Uh, I do know any of you people. <laughs> <laughs> we are playing dune adventures in the imperium by modifius and uh if you caught last week's episode we do everything exactly by the book that's what this podcast and show is known for right down broad street when it comes to the rules uh no last week was a real true stress test of the system and i i really had a lot of fun playing it did you guys enjoy it i know it got crunchy and we were kind of like oh can i move and attack and i attack and move but i think it was the tension was real the crunch was tasty. <laughs> it was a tasty crunch. Even yeah. in milk. Yeah, it's tricky. Like, I am definitely winning the momentum threat game right now. And that l is very limiting to you. And so then I wonder, like, maybe I should be doing lower difficulty tests. Uh, but even when I did the low difficulty tests, I was spending threat to make them higher. So it's hard for you to, to generate momentum. And I 100% blame Jared Logan, who will be your GM in uh, just a few <laughs> short episodes. Because he's like, throw out some difficulty four tests right off top. See what happens. I was like, all right. Um, but... Yeah, it's it's it was really interesting because I've only just read it and to see it actually played out. It's like, well, how, why can't they move and attack? And why does and assets always have to move? And I think by the end there, it just it felt like we were we were moving along at a at a pace that made sense. But yeah, uh, and it's interesting how yeah. like any physical action that you take is preceded by this little moment of like, how does this jive with my drives and my focus in a very duny way? Like, no action is taken without a moment of like deliberation <laughs> right. like, yeah. monologue. there's always a head game going on with the with the physical game which is very of of the of the piece That's yeah so interesting you point that out it really does put us all in the world by making us stop and think in a way that some players i don't know anybody like this may sometimes make impulsive decisions <laughs> and then say oh my character definitely wouldn't have done that but that's not really possible in this it's good. Yeah. yeah. One of my and favorite moments you, from last yeah, you week. Can be Sorry. Impulsive anyway. <laughs> yeah. Is what Nora did with Corin. Like it was just, obviously I was trying to stretch it as much as possible just to try this mechanic, but you going against your drive, like power is power can corrupt. You mm -hmm. were corrupted in that moment yeah. by the fact that you were overpowering this guard. That's right. Yeah. I, I was just like, do I already turn to the dark side so early in this in this game? But I, I think it it made sense for the actions that we were taking. But uh, now we get to see what happens as a result. Yeah. And I think me against it. mechanically, uh, the way things evolved, it really helped to justify why my character got her at bullets. <laughs> That's very nice. No, wait, didn't I just realized they arrived. Until you got the getaway. <laughs> Sorry, <cover>. podcast <laughs> listeners. Uh, podcast I do listeners. like how the assets have been working, like how you could create one during the game because it made for some very cool, interesting uh, getaway Oh, devices. yeah. I, I had no idea how you guys were going to handle the, the restaurant and the great salon. And I barely had an idea of what I was going to do there when you went in. And so coming up with the light switch was a perfect use of the asset mechanic. And mm -hmm. then Skid, you did it again with the phone. Like, yeah. how are you going to get out of there? Yeah, you probably just run through the streets, but now you have a car picking you up. And are we putting the hostage in the car? I'm getting ahead a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you also have a hostage <laughs> that is an adjudicator for House Harkonnen. Um, God, that was wild. It could have got it could have got ugly though. There was some Ooh, yeah, legit fighting. Bad. <laughs> when I was originally conceiving it, I was like, they need to get out of here without shedding blood because if they shed blood, they're already guilty uh, in the eyes of the uh, you know the adjudicator and the Harkonnens and maybe even the Tylorises because they were trying to run from the scene of the crime. Now yeah, they've like, killed like Harkonnen like the guards. No, well, but we but they, we made it look like the other guy did it. That's true. What were you going to say, Which might Skin? give us well, a little bit of time. I was, 
I was going to say, it's like in The Fugitive, if Harrison Ford is like, I didn't kill my wife. And, you know, Tommy Lee Jones is like, I don't care. And then he just kills Tommy Lee Jones and throws him off the waterfall. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. It's just like, well, maybe it didn't kill your wife, but you just killed a United States Marshal. But you are. So now you are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So, but hopefully we were able to cover it up skillfully enough. I'm oh. sure they'll never see through that deception. Luckily, <laughs> ki- no. kidnapping the judge who would have found us guilty of that crime is sure see, to <laughs> there you go. clear our name. Who will yeah. find us guilty now? <laughs> you see what I've uh, done here? Uh, How can you have a guilty verdict if there's no judge? Uh-huh. <laughs> it was the Think only judge <laughs> in the Harkon family, which is interesting. So now you get out by default. Uh, all right, murder solved. Um, <laughs> we gotta send someone to law school. So in four years, we will prosecute. That's yeah. right. Uh, but yeah, now you have a hostage. And, and remind me again, Becca, this was on your one of your original three assets and you just had to like, we'll figure it out later. And so we decided to kind of reverse engineer it in the moment. Yeah, uh, it was my inspiration, whether or not it's the same self-same asset, because I, I took it instead of um, using it to my advantage. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe I, like I should it. have taken a more concrete asset to begin with but you know what now we got an adjudicator and that's all that really matters yeah uh i've actually (laughs) added him to your uh character list here um (laughs) and if if we go back uh to the uh roll 20 here you see i've added him to house harkonnen his name is unger drello Mm. uh and on the character list i wrote let's see he is the adjudicator for house harkonnen now hostage of Duchess Delessa Houdin. <laughs> so let's get right back into it here. You have the Gom Jabbar at his neck. You slowly start to back out. You're, you're there. Aurelius runs out. Corrin runs out. Pharos had already got out, uh, disguised, uh, his second disguise of the day, as an old woman. Gom Jabbar to neck. You slowly back out. But because of the complication, Fenton Quill, the diplomat, the one who put you in the holding room to begin with sees you and tells you he never liked you and now the baron is going to hunt and kill you like dogs and so on top of the murder even if you're cleared of like well clearly these guards had a spat a lover's spat that's why they (laughs) killed each other uh you now have an adjudicator as a hostage and th- this is a role that I've just kind of created as someone that's just like a little higher up uh, than Fenton Quill, someone that comes and is the be all end all. What they say is the law. And then it's up to the Baron to pass judgment. Um, do you walk me through this? Like you're walking back and you're looking for the car and there's people flooding out from the, the, the darkness in the restaurant and the salon. There's people crowding the streets. There's Fremen, there's shopkeeper. It's everything. Pandemonium. Are, are you looking for the car? What are we doing here? I know the car will come as I continue to calmly step backwards down the stairs towards the grand entrance of our very fine opera house as I look up at its facade and wonder if this will be the last time I see this gorgeous building and wish it a goodbye. I continue to step backward with Unger, uh, guiding him with one hand as the Gamjabar is held to his neck with the other, and I say yes, just like that, continue. Backwards with me now. That's right. And I lead him to where I hope the car will just be there when I step backwards and uh, my associates will be able to help me get him in. Aurelius, you called the car. Yeah, here's my thing. So my preference would have been to call someone we know, like call someone that we can count on, like some kind of loyal servant to do this instead of just, you know, an Uber. Okay, but <laughs> but it's like we we don't. I don't think we have an uh, applicable asset already. We have no momentum left. So even though like we are a, um, we are a a royal house, like uh, you know, in 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 this on this planet, presumably with some sort of infrastructure, mm-hmm. I don't think we have any sort of legal way to accomplish that. So I I, I had to call like a neutral party and just promise the money. Yeah, you know, in my mind, and we said this at character creation, your house is much larger than you, you know? Right. Um, if you're looking back at the opera house, actually, you can probably see some Houdin guards being let out 
in Dune Universe handcuffs. They're being taken out. Um, now, do you have other people in your retinue that weren't at the opera today? Of course. Um, but in that moment of panic, yeah, you had to call the the, the Arakeen Uber. Right. <laughs> I just having trouble picturing this. I'm um, hoping we have a major domo for the house, someone that heads up all of the house staff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, this is going to be interesting because I will say this, I, I don't know how cars work in the Dune universe. <clears throat> R- Ross, you're uh, through book four. Are, are there just uh, Model Ts rolling around the streets <laughs> of downtown Arakee? Yeah, there's floppy jalopies rolling all over these streets. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I uh... Yeah, there's there's wheeled vehicles, um, and and uh, and animal drawn vehicles, and uh, yeah, there, there, of course there's there's stuff like that. But the vehicle that they refer to most, of course, is that ornithopter. Right, it kind of looks like a it's like a dragonfly, dragonfly. helicopter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where this is like in downtown area, like there's no place for something like that to land. You do have access right. to that. Some of you have actual personal ornithopters. Um, but here, there's just the, the car or whatever this is that you can imagine uh, at home. That pulls up and you're able to get in. And do you just slide the adjudicator in slowly? Corin, are you uh, taking over and helping with this? What's happening? Uh, myself, I don't, I don't think I have any, I'm not the person driving it, but as soon as it lands, um, as soon as I see that, uh, that Delessa has, uh, safely entered, I will go in as well, but I'll wait till after that moment. Okay. I open the door, uh, well... With a gum jabar, you have to be so careful because if I accidentally move poorly, yeah. that's it. Oh, so sorry. I don't think oh, I no. opened my own door. <laughs> Not you. Oh, God. I yeah. would have opened it for Delessa you. Delissa doesn't open her own doors. <laughs> no, never. Uh, right, of course. Gum jabar, no gum jabar. So uh, when the door is open, I pull the gum jabar away. And in the momentary confusion of me doing so before he has a chance to react, I just push him in the chest so he sort of falls backwards into the car. Okay. And he's not going to fight because he knows now he, you've got uh, a team beside you. Uh, I'm going to spend two threat uh, for as the car, as this limousine is driving off, you look out and you see one of your guards like break free of his chains and start to run. And immediately uh, two Harkonnen guards pull out Mala pistols and shoot him in the back and oh, he tumbles whoa. down the front stairs of the opera house and you pull away from that scene Tomas Tomas <laughs> we come into him. a new scene now where you boom, lose one momentum bringing you to zero zero <laughs> and now that I've spent that two threat to have that dramatic moment I'm down to five threat I'll live forever. Where are you going? <laughs> you can't go back to Houdin Manor. They're going to look for you there. Where are you going to head now? I mean, do we have to, like, at this point, give you more threat to buy another asset <laughs> and somewhere safe that we can be? Well, I, mean, I think first step is get to the ornithopter and get uh, in order to get further away. Yeah, trying to go into the go into the desert. Uh, Yeah, that's that was that's our only option, I think. Unless, unless, uh, unless um, I I, I have an option. Perhaps one of uh, Pharos's assets is a courtesan. Um, Just a a, we we've we've described uh, how Sudan is something of a pleasure palace, Mm -hmm. and I think uh, perhaps one of his contacts is one of these people who may move freely between the. Maybe they're a, cor- a dancer in the uh, in the uh, in the production sometimes, but but for the right price you can you can have a more uh, intimate performance, shall we say? And um, the uh, and maybe there's a place, maybe maybe this person operates out of a place in Arakeen that we could go to. Oh, I love this. Yeah, yeah. yeah you a little, get a pleasure house, a little bit, bit clandestine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A desert, yeah, desert brothel or just <laughs> desert. Yeah, those are your options. You know, 
I will say going to the ornithopter is is certainly possible. You guys have that access. Um, you'd be taking the hostage with you or, or maybe you're killing the hostage and leaving them behind or you're just like, get out of here, we're done with you. But yeah, I would I would allow you to use this uh, pleasure house, like the the basement of the pleasure house, without spending momentum or giving threat because of Ross's connection to this or Pharos's connection to this courtesan. Let's yeah. do it. That sounds yeah. good. All okay. Right. All right. So we come up on this new scene, and you're in the basement of this pleasure house. You hear, uh, you know, music upstairs and the stomping of feet, and. The four of you are in this room, and tied to a chair is the adjudicator, Unger Drello, dressed in black from head to toe, with a uh, like square hat on his head. Going back two episodes ago, Dresden Tyloris was most likely poisoned, fell to his death out of your owner's box. The murder has been pinned on you. There are a number of suspects. You need to prove your innocence. What are you looking to do here? And you have to do it stealthily. I don't know. <laughs> Who are your suspects again? Let's go through the list well, of suspects. Right. Yes. Fenton Quill, Fenton Quill himself, the, yes. the, the Harkonnens, who... Uh, may have been trying to stop the rise of House Sudan by pinning this murder on them, destroying them, and and also destroying the heir of another household, effectively yeah. kneecapping two minor houses to to maintain their own prestige. An alternate yeah. m- modus operandi for Fenton Quill, the Harkonnens would like to own the opera house he let slip mm-hmm. to yeah. the old That's woman. That's right. Yeah, uh, we don't own this opera house yet. Yet. Right. Yeah, they they clearly wanted wanted the assets of Houdan all for themselves. Right. Yes. Uh, we have Thurman Tyloris. Yes, the drunkard, uh, black sheep of the Tyloris family, uncle, passed over uh, to let his brother rule. Um, he was very rude to Aurelius when they first met. Uh, yeah, there's motive there for for sure. We still don't know about the Spacing Guild Navigator, do we? No. Yeah, Dinar Banan. Why was a Guild Navigator in attendance for that show? You know, in some ways, it's not too out of the ordinary. In other ways, whenever a Guild Navigator rolls into town, eyeballs widen, eyebrows are raised. Mm -hmm. So... The the, the Navigators... No, um, perhaps this is is, uh, Ferris thinking out loud. Navigators, because of their monopoly, think in terms of economy. And what are the, uh, the chome holdings of the particular houses, the, their access to the spice required for their particular set of skills? I don't know how, how our particular house would, or the destruction of it would aid their acquisition of more of the same, but the presence of such a one does throw things out of balance. Well, uh, they, the Harkonnens, are in charge of the spice still at this point, yes? Yes. So perhaps they, if the Harkonnens are indeed behind it, perhaps they are calling in favors or pressuring the guild navigators for their assistance in exchange for better prices or better access. Yes. Do we suspect Dinar Banan? used his influence during the opera to dull the senses, perhaps? Perhaps. It certainly, whatever happened, certainly slipped beneath all of our notices. And we are all all people gifted in... Exactly. It is unusual. It takes great skill. For that reason, I tend not to suspect Thurman Tyloris, though... Ruling him out at this stage would be unwise. He was very rude to me, Your Grace. (laughs) If he had this plan, causing a stir of any kind seems mm, going against what's in his best interest. True, but I think regardless of the outcome of uh, our our case or the evidence, I think he should be punished. (laughs) 
<laughs> if, uh, noted. Looking if at your, go ahead. whoever had staged this to frame you, it gives House Tyloris the opportunity to take House Houdan by force, to which House Harkonnen still benefits from because if they are utilizing House Tyloris' machinery for spice production, that means that they would still gain to benefit. I can only assume that the Tylorises will remain in control. Of course, they can't be accused of killing their son if we are being accused of such. So what do the Harkonnens have to gain aside from our opera house? Well, if they're keeping two houses a step down the ladder, it keeps their position of power solidified. Quite right. Hmm. Well, we do have one resource we could mine. Uh, Corin, I believe your skills are well suited for getting information out of our guest. Perhaps Aurelius m- may assist in, in finding the right questions to ask, but Corin, you know how to um, tighten our hold. And you I've- see Corin as she just cracks her knuckles and smiles at this uh, proposition. <laughs> your grace, I find this all very distasteful, but of course I will acquiesce to whatever your wishes are. <laughs> whatever methods you deem appropriate, I will assist. Aurelius, I respect your um, impetus to do things in a non-violent way, so perhaps you should ask the questions that would yield results without needing. I shall. Such means. And I will give a fair warning to you both that I may vomit at some point during this process. <laughs> Please don't. I'll attempt, I'll try not to, Your Grace. Well, I hopefully, you. hopefully okay. Mr. Hugram, you shall be diplomatic enough to where more um, uh, belligerent persuasion will not be uh, necessary. Well, I welcome your uh, confidence, Pharaohs. I shall try my best. As we say in the theater, I've got your back. Well, <laughs> as we say in the theater, the show must go on. I think we all put our hands as in. As well. <laughs> I've got your back. I've got your That's back. That's right. Got your back. The adjudicator puts his hand. The show must go on. Yeah, it's like, no, not you. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. How did it get untied? Untied. Uh, <laughs> ties himself back up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, for the adjudicator, so. we have another saying, break a leg. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. And she snaps his knee. (laughs) (laughs) Artemia! Time will remain whether that means good luck or bad luck for you. I don't know if this is just one big room, but I'd like to slip back and lean into the shadows so I can uh, have plausible deniability about being a a part of this whole uh, torture for information situation. Mm. Very wise. He's sitting there stoically, just staring at the wall ahead. Maybe he's listening to your every word. Maybe he's completely ignoring you. Maybe he's in his own mind palace. I mean, Uh, as he can no doubt see, we are theorizing about the true perpetrators of this crime. More more than any outsider, if our words amongst ourselves are to be believed, unless this is all a little play for his benefit, he should see that the blood is not on our hands. As uh, as he says this, Corin will check her sword uh, to make sure there's no more blood on it. <laughs> yeah, the scabbard is just dripping. Just, Maybe Ferris, who wasn't there for that, notices that and was like, uh, hmm, yes. I'm like, We'll speak of this at another time. I give Corrin a very sharp look. I am still upset that blood was spilt because now we are guilty of something. My duty is to protect you and keep you alive. I did what was necessary. Uh, uh, Aurelius, may I borrow your, what's the thing called that makes the silence? Oh yes, my uh, thingy. <laughs> I call it a thingy, but uh, more <laughs> appropriately, it is called an Ixian damper. Aurelius, your damper for a moment. 
Yes, of your grace. And he produces a little black disc, I think, that like hovers. I want to actually just take Corin into the corner and then activate this device. If that's all right. All right, you slide into the corner with Corin. You turn on the dampener. What do you say to her? My love, you disappointed me back there. I only did what was necessary to protect you. They haven't shown any respect for your life. Why should I show respect for a guard? I run the back of my finger down your cheek. It's passion. It's what draws me to you, but you must be careful. We were accused of something. Yes, I know you went back, presumably to cover tracks, but we're the only ones to point the finger at. Even if they truly believe whatever you set up back there, surely we'll take the blame either way. I never meant to disobey you, nor would I ever imagine doing so, but in the moment I felt that that's what I needed to do to protect you. And I regret ever having to command you, but I also felt it is what I needed to do to protect you. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. She nods and then takes the thingy uh, and deactivates. Walks back over to the others. Thank you, your grace. Your thingy. Rest assured that uh, (laughs) neither of us heard a word, nor were we even able to read your lips, as is another function of the device. (laughs) Very useful thingy indeed. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna go up to Unger Drello. Um, so with your leave, Your Grace. Indeed. It's a adjudicator. What is his title? Uh, what, what adjudicator is, Drello. Just adjudicator. Adjudicator, allow me to introduce myself. I am Aurelius de Grom. I am envoy for House Houdin. Uh, you may be. Fami- you may be familiar with. My companions here. I apologize profusely for all the, the, any discomfort you may have experienced as a result of this ordeal, but we can only assure you that we are innocent of the crime which we have been accused of, and we wish to get to the bottom of this. Which crime would that be, Mentat? The crime of murder or the crime of kidnapping? an adjudicator for your liege house. Well, we were innocent of the first one. (laughs) Um, I think that you would probably be called as a very reliable witness in the trial about the second, um, to which we admittedly are quite guilty. But that's, I think that if we are able to prove our innocence in the first, it would obviate any need for punishments due to the second, if, if um, if you'll agree. Whether I agree or not is not the point, for ultimately you will be judged by the Baron, and he is far less forgiving than I. I sent out like that hand signal um, to Delessa, wondering if she's able to make him forget. I signal back, great idea. Uh, I want to walk around behind him so he won't see my lips moving and my intention is to try the voice on him. He's struggling in his chair. Oh, I see how this is. You will have her use her witch powers on me and it will be as if none of this happened. Ah, why should I even struggle? All of you witches are the same. This will be hard to do. Um, maybe I'm not so interested in making him forget exactly, or maybe more um, come around to be on our side. Uh, because if we send him back or we don't send him back, uh, I, it's worse if we don't send him back. And, right. and if we do, yeah. I, it's better if he, he uh, <laughs> says we're not guilty. So. Um, 
Perhaps. He's also he's also intimating that we, we might not be getting a fair trial either way. Right. Right. <laughs> um, Mm-hmm. Um, Especially considering that we are about to kidnap and perhaps murder the judge in our case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think your classic, your classic courtroom drama. Well, <laughs> just like the verdict well, with Paul Newman. That's just what happens. Like I'm sure many judges in the past have been bribed adequately. Perhaps that will work on this adjudicator. Mm. We are in the basement of a reputable pleasure house. And so what I would like to command him to do is... Let down, <clears throat> let down your defenses and enjoy the pleasure house <laughs> That's a good voice. Uh, to forgive these, this house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind roll? of trying to put him in like a trance state so we can just like yeah. send him upstairs to be entertained. Uh, and then maybe ha- just have just have good feelings overall about the whole experience. Yeah, this is torn him up. Like Bravo montage. What? Bravo montage. This sounds like your classic Delessa Houdin communicate power role. That's right. Uh, you are trying to, yet again, abuse your fetishist's red powers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to warp the mind of this humble adjudicator. Exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, you don't have an appropriate focus in communicate. Uh, well, given the make out we considered inspiration, perhaps mm-hmm. go upstairs and enjoy a pleasure house. Could too be considered an inspiring communication uh, it's yeah. not it's not the worst worst argument i've ever heard so just to make sure i'm getting this correct you're going to kind of have him just go upstairs and enjoy himself yeah basically and, like, i want to like happened. i kind of want him to um let down his guard enough to sort of be in this trance where, where he'll go along with things mm-hmm. uh, it, for as long as the voice works on him and maybe by that point he'll just be having a great time and decide to stay yeah, and you know, there's some Muda music up there. Like, he could very easily get entranced by that and be lost on another planet. Uh, give him the VIP tour. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe What's give him a little... Yeah, uh, who knows if he's You're into... using the voice to implant a mental aphrodisiac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here's what I'm that thinking. That sounds inspiring. This would be difficulty three, but because you have him tied up and subdued, I'm going to bop it down to a difficulty two. Basically, that trait of Traits. subdued is bopping it down to a difficulty two. Um, let's see what you got. I'll let you use inspiration. Uh, okay. So you could make anything under your communicate role count as double success. Okay. I'm just going to go straight up. Straight up, now tell me. <laughs> we got a five and a seven, both oh. below. That's four successes. Whoa. Four successes. This guy oh, is nice. hot to try. Rolling <laughs> right. low on a D20 is uh, really my wheelhouse, so this, this game yeah. system totally works for me. <laughs> All right, so four successes. You can bank those two momentum or use it to ask him a question. <gasps> at pro, like at a one-to-one one ratio. It. Okay. So we could potentially ask two questions? Sure. Okay. Mm. And the way this works is like, if, if I don't have a good answer, you, you you don't spend the momentum. Okay. I I can suggest one question. I, I was going to just go straight up with who framed us, but <laughs> what you thinking? Uh, you look to your advisor. What's your deal? We're deal? about to find out upstairs, you know. Yeah, that's true. A <laughs> little deal, bit of man. this, a little bit of that. Uh, uh, no, no. If it, w- w- yeah, who did, did? Do you know who framed us? Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, who poisoned Dresden Tyloris? So I imagine the voice puts him in this like haze. Where Just all of a sudden his, his demeanor changes and he's like I know not my duty is to justice first and the Harkonnens second I was sent here to ascertain the truth yeah I'm not spending momentum on that Troy <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if anything, you learn that he, if he knew, 
who set you up, he should tell you in this moment. And he doesn't know. Okay. That doesn't necessarily absolve the Harkonnens, but the adjudicator does not know. Can we ask him, are, are you aware of a plot against our house? No. However, it has come to my attention that you have a Bene Tleilox in your mists. What? No, surely I would have been aware of such, such a thing. No, <clears throat> it is true. They are spies and they are assassins. Perhaps you should look to your own house first. We can't trust anything a Harkonnen says. Yes, more Harkonnen lies, your grace, clearly. Hmm. Obviously he believes it to be true, but it doesn't mean it is indeed a fact. I can jog his memory as I, like, bring up this, like, I don't uh, take out the sword, but, like, I very much put my hand towards it. Our Duchess is wise in what one believes in what is the truth are often not the same. It seems that the adjudicator is a more impartial party than at first I would have assumed. Yet I fear we are no closer to knowing who is responsible for the assassination. Is there what any other information him? we would like to know from this specimen before sending him to enjoy <laughs> his proclivities? Uh, I'm at a loss, and I'm a mentat. <laughs> uh, I, I give the eye signal, uh, or maybe I do a quick hand signal to uh, to my girl Corin to cut the rope tying his hands. So I very slowly come over to him, take a knife, not my sword, but I'll take like a dagger, <laughs> as though I was going in closer to him, and then at the last moment, <laughs> cut the cut the uh, ropes. And then I, I maybe go over to him and like, I'll uh, I'll see our guest upstairs to a uh, taste of its delights. And uh, while I, uh, well, I think you, of course, understand that you cannot leave here this evening. I can promise you, uh, Air Adjudicator, that. You shall not wish to. And uh, as I lead him up, I'll just like, just momentary hard eye contact with uh, the Duchess. Um, and uh, barring anyone else having any other queries or anything, I'll take the adjudicator up to the, up to the pleasure dome, <laughs> the pleasure palace. <laughs> the champagne he just, room. He just keeps yes. muttering under his breath. Look to your own house, Duchess. Look to your own house. As he is taken upstairs. Well, that was riveting. Yes. Um, not a lot well, of then. useful information there, unfortunately. No, and uh, of use. we are in a great deal more trouble, if you pardon my saying so, Your Grace. At least at the moment. So I've made a list of suspects for you, um, you know, based on people you've, uh, you have questions about. Um, you know, I guess I could put Ungar Dreller over there as well, but it seems like he wasn't very helpful and you had him in a state where he would have been forthcoming. Uh, but you have questions about Fenton Quill and the Harkonnens in general. Questions about Denard Banan. Why was this guild navigator there? Questions about the uncle. Um, and anyone also Ilgard. else? Ilgard. Ah, Ilgard Fane. That was, yes. it seemed like a very yeah. strange conversation. Very. And I, and since he mentioned that he, he had been killed and was a doctor, Ferris is very interested in learning about the life of the uh, person that Ilgard Fane has replaced. Um but I don't know if I can, I can get that here. Um. Yeah, so 
the way conflict works in this game, it's very, very interesting that the system that we used last week is kind of a catch-all for all different kinds of conflict. And that could be dueling, where the zones are different parts of your body. Uh, it could be warfare, where it's like highliner against highliner and you know blowing ships out of the sky. Uh, and one other thing is uh, espionage. <laughs> And that's kind of where you're at right now. Yes. And the assets you move are spies, informants, so, uh, planting surveillance machines uh, right. in inside of houses to get information. Um, so, so I, that's kind of where you're at. So uh, first and foremost, I will, uh, as I'm taking him up, that is precisely what Pharos has in mind, to hand him off to uh, the courtesan uh, asset and send him off on a on a ride <laughs> get him uh <laughs> give him whatever whatever he wishes uh seduce him by whatever means uh his his proclivities uh lead him and um loosen his tongue even more maybe than the voice did break break through that stoic facade another way since he's our only current uh lever at the moment short of getting someone in the house yeah. Now, I would say you also have connections throughout the city that you mm -hmm. can rely on that would require roles. You know, Pharos, you may have a Ben H. Lelox, uh informant or connection somewhere in the city that you could try to set up a meeting for. Uh, Corin, you may have a Fremen, uh, part of your Fremen circle that you could contact to see if they know anything. Same thing with Delessa. There might be Bene Gesserit sisters, but for you it's a little more difficult because they might turn you in. Um, and then uh, for our mentat, Aurelius, like you are just looking for information, you know, information about the Spacing Guild, information about Thurman Tylorus. You know, a lot of different angles you can take here, but if there's something you're interested in doing, you can imagine that you have those connections somewhere. Don't worry about creating the asset because you getting a hold of those connections is going to be roles, like you're moving through zones to get closer. Like if you want to plant a listening device inside of House Tylorus, that's going to require roles to move through zones. Right. Well, I do have already a political spy as one of my assets. Oh, perfect. Nice. So, and I figure given my distaste and distrust of the Harkonnens, I, I would imagine it would be in the Harkonnen uh, sphere. So that that's something we could draw upon. That's a great route. And so now for you, it's where you're all on the lamb. It's like, how do you get in contact with these people? And right. it's really just like, you you get creative and then I create the zones for you to move through. Okay, great. Uh, my desire would be for Delessa to perhaps go in, you know, peasant garb and uh, mm. search the places that she knows Benny Jesuits communicates with their coded dots frequently. We have sort of like, within Ar Arakeen locales where we know to check. Hmm, like drops? Yeah, just like, where's the hot gossip? Where's the Reddit thread of coded dots in the city? I think there's <laughs> probably a few different ones. Yeah. Uh, and I think Corin would definitely reach out to uh, some of the Fremen that she trusts to see if there are any uh, any new business dealings that House Tyloris might have undergone that's not business as, you, as usual. This may be out of the ordinary to see if they had any, uh, basically like who benefits and where the money trail is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, since, I mean, you just fired my imagination, Troy, of course, of course, uh, Ferris would have a contact with a with other Lilaxu because this is a two way street. Like he's feeding information back to them, of course. So, in the way that there'd be this kind of like Bene Gesserit dead drop sites, I'm sure like every couple every bit of time, Ferris would go and meet with another face dancer, perhaps who's running information on House Sudan and these secrets that are siphoned up at the Opera House back to the Lilaxu, and he'd like to set up one of those meetings to maybe learn what he can about Ilgard Vane and what else is going on. Okay, great. So you all have kind of a loose plans of where you want to go. And if you gain information, then you'll, 
you'll change your your route and everything becomes more difficult not necessarily mechanically like plus 1d but more difficult to maneuver because you have to keep a low profile so anything you can do like going switching to street clothing uh you know you're creating the tree trait undercover or something like that anything you can do to to hide yourself uh is only going to help you move along but ultimately you need to it's similar to what we did last week you need to move through zones to get closer to your contacts uh depending on what you want to do um so let's let's kind of this can all happen around the same time or we can do one at a time but who wants to kind of start dancing first with this it's very much free play here i for one thing i think that Aurelius, he because he wanted to make contact with his spy. I think that they they he relies on dead drops ordinarily. Mm-hmm. So, but he wants to speak to his contact. So he he pulls peels off a couple of layers of robes, and under the under the second robe, there's a like an Arakine sort of peasant shroud, and he like pulls the hood up, and he says if. You'll pardon me. He's like hides his face, and he was just like, "I have an appointment to keep." It's as if he wouldn't mind if you, if by your leave, your grace. Of course, I believe we all have certain appointments we should head to to find more information. Be safe. Be well. And he goes off into the night. I have your back. And I just want to be clear <laughs> that the adjudicator is having his world rocked right now. I know. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. Best night of his life. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be like, you know what? You guys are innocent. That was a blast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So let's let's trail Aurelius here for a little bit. Aurelius, normally you would just have uh, designated dead drops. Is this something you do weekly at designated times? You know that if you go at a certain time, that drop is there? Yeah. With coded I, information? I'm going to say just uh by happenstance tonight is one of our one of the regular check-ins for the dead drop okay so Uh, you're making me want to watch the americans again oh god i know right uh so i'm gonna go uh yeah i'm just gonna go there's like a public there's like a public square in arakeen with some sort of maybe uh there's a monument to the the harkonnens or something uh, and he's going to I'm trying to picture like what a public square like that would look in Arakeen with no plants or anything like no water right 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 uh, certainly not uh, under the Harkonnens uh, yeah. things change a little bit after the events of Dune but yeah no I've, there's some pictures in the book where it's like oh yeah that looks like a like a little farmer's market but yeah like a, a really nice park doesn't quite exist it's yeah, more yeah. like cold stone monuments right. um, so whereas you, maybe you're trying to intercept your uh, asset before the drop where normally you would just come afterwards right right well I think he's the, my uh, the way what I'm picturing is that the asset is going to check the drop to see if I have left. I got you. Okay. One. So, all right. I'm going to meet him at the drop. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's do a roll. Okay. I want this. To, I think this should be a move roll, which probably is not your best, but it sounds like, and you tell me if I'm wrong, a move truth, which yeah, is a cool combination. Good. Like you're you're moving through the streets very purposefully, and it's to try and find out truth. Yeah. Do you have a move focus? I do have a move focus. I have the move focus of Grace. Break dancing. Uh, mm-hmm, grace. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll let Grace work because you know there, there's a certain Grace that you're gonna you're gonna have to use a certain Grace to disguise your movements. You know, not that yeah, people this is like, what I'm hey, thinking. Wait, is that that meant up? No, yeah, because of because of his his uh, diplomatic training, like he is well ver- and the Mentats uh, uh, attributes. Like he's well versed in all the sort of the way that different people communicate non-verbally, so he can emulate the way people move. Like he's a keen observer of that kind of thing. So that that's what that's supposed to represent. Okay, great. Give me a, so. a difficulty two move, um, move truth. Okay, move truth. So that is target number is twelve. But you got right. the focus. Two successes. Yes. Nine and an eight. Nine and an eight. All right. So, d- 
describe for me this scene. You roll up and you see your guy or, or girl, whoever it is, uh, just kind of uh, fidgeting through a drain pipe looking for your drop. Okay, so he kind of walks by this person and uh, says, oh, what is the language on Arakane? What, what language do they speak? Uh, French? Chakshoba? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, what is the language on Arakane? Well, you in, speak that, basically. Yeah, yeah. A, so I walk by, and in the Ara, Ara, in Arakane sort of street slang, uh, so I, looking for something, governor. And um, if he looks up, and he's just like, don't, don't give a whistle, but... Uh, I've come down to apples and pears to ask you a question of five. This is all like street slang, right? That they use. So uh, the spy, or yeah, the spy is caught a little bit off guard and uh, says something back to you that is coded for "We cannot be seen here in the streets. You are being watched. Hmm. Meet me at." the bluebird tavern <laughs> rightio governor cheerio and, and that's code for I understand and I'll see you there that's what I figured it was and they peel off going down one way and you go another um, so now and it's just really to roll some more dice I want to get you into this tavern without being seen you're disguised so it's going to lower the difficulty, but still, this is a this is not something you do. This is very dangerous. It's dangerous for your uh, informant, and it's obviously very dangerous for you as you are a current fugitive. Right. So that's going to be a difficulty three that I bump down to a two because of your disguise. Okay. Um, and you tell me what you want to roll here. I like move again. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I think the move and uh maybe duty because like i am a physically mm -hmm. a physical coward yeah i like but it. I'm, I'm doing this because i'm driven by my duty to the duchess and to the house right if a harkonnen guard comes on you in the street and wants to fight you you will be dead yes you know because you don't have corn this is your duty you're doing this out of your obligation uh, I like yeah. it. And, and the point of having you roll dice is let's see if we can generate some momentum or maybe get a complication. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. It's like, I, I think he's driven to be more sneaky because of how cowardly he is. Mm -hmm. So, and it, like his mental ability allows him to really focus and be like super stealthy, like when the need comes or, or to blend in in like a different cultural situations or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, I will roll that that target number is 13 five or better is a crit uh two successes nine and a seven okay so you just made it uh you slide in to the bluebird tavern <laughs> probably way off of the actual uh the way the universe works <laughs> yeah. here but i'm sure they have taverns they don't uh, have they never no one goes to a bar in dune <laughs> they do in our dune uh yeah. so you roll in there it's like an East Village bar. You got to go down and underneath. And, uh, yeah, yeah. You're it's like Akira. In, yeah, you're in this, this dark, uh, only red lights everywhere, smoke hanging in the air, the smell of sweat uh, and sand at Melange, maybe. Mm. That cinnamon smell. Yeah. And Definitely as you wade. BO, like a siege. A little BO. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you wade through it, and you see sitting at a lone table, uh, by themselves, your informant. What, what, what's your informant's name? Let's give him. Is it a a, a man or a woman? Uh, it is a woman. Okay. Uh, her name is uh, Kyla Breach. Kyla Breach. Yeah. Okay. Great. Kyla is uh, sitting there, and. Um, she doesn't even make eye contact with you, but you know that you know that she sees you. And I go over to the bar 
and order a pint of sand and I bring it over blowing on it and I walk over and this is like pardon my love is this seat taken no sit I'm terribly sorry to have to do this to you my dear but you may have gleaned that our house is in a bit of trouble yes they say you killed the young heir Dresden Tylorus is this true I can't imagine you'd care one way or the other but I can assure you that it is not true you know there are people that would pay a lot of money to know of your whereabouts yes I am aware I am also aware of your debt to me personally that is why I am here at a danger to myself so what would you know so I may leave find out all you can there is some so there was some sort of scheme in the works operated against our house the Duchess has been framed I wish you to find out all you can so we can put together together the pieces and prove her innocence can you do this I can you know I have connections if there is anything that I can glean that will be of use I will I will drop it is there anyone you suspect that I should be looking out for well not on Godrello I will say the adjudicator no we've been keeping close tabs on him I believe Fenton Quill is someone that you should pay particular attention to. Also, if in your investigations you're able to find anything of uh, use against uh, Thurman Tyloris, uh, please pay particular attention to that. It was quite rude to me, and I intend to see him go down one way or another. Tyloris. Yes. Yes, I heard something about him just the other day. I do not know if it will be useful, but they say he has gotten into the spice smuggling racket. There are a lot of rumors about this man. There always have been. But spice smuggling is something new. He is Very dangerous. Yes, and he is not well respected even within his own house. So perhaps he's trying to carve out his own peace here on Arrakis. Strange that you mention him, but that is all I know. I will look more. I will say also that Deso Ren, the house swordmaster, was had a part in freeing us from our captivity. But I am not sure quite whether to trust him completely either. Yes. Swordmaster of Ginaz, former bullfighter, brash, arrogant man. I will look into him. And then there is also an Ilgard Fane in House Tyloris. He is a Gola. Uh, believe me, I am as shocked as you surely are. That is dirty business. What have you gotten yourself into, Aurelius? Hopefully nothing you can't help me get out of. As you've done in the past, and I'm sure we'll do in the future. I should go. Yes. I know you will do your best. Please be safe. And I will speak with you via our usual communication. I look Soon. forward to it. Right now, you- Governor, I'll see you later on the flip side of the Thames. <laughs> She just Have like, another cup of sand on me. <laughs> puts a sash over her face and uh, sneaks out, leaving you there. As the glow globe fades on this underground bar and comes up on who? I think that the Duchess 
uh, has stepped into the outer chamber of the basement and once again called upon, upon her Prana Bendu, conditioning this time to make herself appear very ill, to create a bloat in her own face and uh, sort of drain the blood out of it. So she kind of uh, contorts with all this bloating. Her eyes get smaller, her cheeks get puffier, and she sort of has a sallow hue to her skin. Um, She takes off her fine garments, her fancy epaulets, and uh, just dons (laughs) whatever rags the the cleaning woman kept in uh, this basement corner and heads out with a cloak over her head to find uh, the the info drops that the Bene Gesserit leave around Arakeen to spread information, any of the sisters that are on this planet. Um, and of course, they're, one of the, my assets is the coded dots. So if I can get to them successfully, uh, then you know maybe having that as an asset uh, will, will help in some way. Okay, I like this. Now, obviously, very dangerous for you to be out and about. You're concealing yourself by taking off your garb. You're bloating your face to try and disguise yourself. Um, you probably even emit an energy that, or like an aura around you of uh, hiding, but still very dangerous. So you're trying to move to these drops that, as far as you know, are constantly being watched. So let's do a move roll. I like move truth again, but you tell me if you like something better based on your drive statements. What are you what you're really trying to get to here? Uh, I'm looking for truth. Yeah. 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 So What's I agree your with truth you. Statement? Move in truth. Uh, the purpose of argument is to change the nature of truth. The purpose of argument is to change the nature of truth. I'd say that's that's not super applicable. I was going to give it to you. Nah. I was like, it's just confusing enough to be applicable, but okay. Uh, Unless I use battle tactics, because gaining information could be seen as a battle tactic rather than move in particular. Uh, I kind of like that because you are at war right now, in a way. You know what I mean? It yeah. is a uh, you're you're officially at war. You're at war with <laughs> Tyloris and Harkonnen. Um, blood has been shed. So, yeah, I'm oh, yeah. fine with moving to battle. Battle right. truth. Battle truth, baby. This is a battle for truth. Yeah. Uh, do you have um, a focus in battle? I do. Okay, what is it? Tactics. Oh, that's tactics. Fine. And what is your battle score? Five. So together, I only have 11, but maybe I can get a, an extra hit. Okay. I'm going to say uh, because of your prominence, that's going to be difficulty three. Hmm. Rolling under 11, this is going to be difficult. Uh, I think that I'm going to... I do have one determination that I did not spin before, so okay. um, we'll see if I need it. Great. Yeah, you can always decide after the fact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you want to buy a die, too? Just. I would like to buy one <laughs> die, if I oh, may. No. Okay, I'll just boop, take a little threat. Okay. Uh, so now, zero momentum, six threat? Yes. Rude. Three dies. Anything under a five counts twice. Anything under 11 is success. That one, baby. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Uh, and then we've got a 16 and a 10. So that's three, three successes. successes. Nice. That's why she's the Duchess. That's right. <laughs> Great, you got it. Oh, hell. Didn't build momentum, but it was a very, very difficult thing. Like, if you... If, listen, if Aurelius gets caught and killed, that's very bad. You're losing your human computer. If you get caught, it's end of game. Game over. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> so, you move through the streets, move past the stalls where all of the... Uh, Sellers sell their wares. They're starting to pack up for the night because it's dark. And you go to one of these places and you find coded dots. How do you think this, how do you imagine this works? Is it like you take, you take your pamphlet of dots or you just read them and imprint them on your memory? Maybe there is a sister at a booth that stays there late. 
Oh, a I very like that. young uh, young one. She she doesn't maybe even know how to read all of the dots yet. Um, I like that. So you slide up and maybe you look like you're going to buy something and she just um, is there a signal so she knows who you are? Is there something you can I use our Benny Gesserit hand signals to just say hello. Good day. Good evening. She nods as if she didn't understand anything. Um, but then as she's packing up her wares, she begins moving uh, the baubles around the table in a very deliberate way where she is replicating the coded dot messaging. And so she'll take uh, one knickknack, move it someplace else, and she moves them in, all, in such a way that she is sending you a message. And then she puts them all away. The thing I'm wondering about most that I think may be discussion, aside from the Benny Gesserit head of house, which is probably a hot gossip right now, um, what I'm wondering is why there was a Spice Guild navigator on this planet to begin with, or at uh, mm -hmm. representing Harkonnens at a public function. Okay, so you send those signals as well? I'll ask her directly. Okay. Uh, I'll say, child... Why is the guild presence stronger of late? So we'll start with the message that she sent you. And the message that she sent you is that, and this is kind of like the Bene Gesserit Times. Here's the front page uh, <laughs> sort of headline um, that every sister needs to know. She says, there is word that a Bene Gesserit sister has been possessed by her other memory. Oh. It has been a rumor in the sisterhood for some time, and we have all felt it. And maybe you yourself have felt it, because this is something that you've heard tell about. You know, it's like they've been talking for a while that someone has done something like this. And so this isn't too surprising to you. Um, but what she says next in the moving of the baubles is shocking. She says, this abomination has landed here on Arrakis and is hiding somewhere in the desert. <sighs> to what end, we know not. Either our prescience is limited by this abomination's power, or it's all hokum and lies intended to distract us from a greater threat. Okay, to clarify. The other mem memory is being clouded by this possessed person? It's unclear. It's like this rumor stage. Like, the other memory is basically what happens to Alia uh, at the end of uh, Dune when she's just born with all of her mother other's memories. But this rumor that you've been hearing is that some Bene Gesserit sister has been completely possessed by her other memory. And... Uh, so you've heard this for a while, but now this abomination, as it's known in the sisterhood, is here on Arrakis, hiding in the desert. But why? Are they here to do something? Or are they here, not unlike the guild navigator, because their mere presence is distracting and threatening? And then when you ask about the guild navigator, she is surprised that you would ask a direct question when there's a system in place. And she just says, two Saduka soldiers landed with the guild navigator. <laughs> what? The navigator has returned to his planet, but the soldiers <laughs> were not with him when he returned. Oh shit. And uh, I leave a few coins on the counter. She looks at it like, and just take go. off. Uh, when she looks up, I'm gone. <laughs> 14 cents? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well throw that away. Pennies are worthless. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she looks up and you're gone. And she just stares down at the change, grasps it in her hand, and goes into the shadows. Let's take a quick break. Man, that break was quick. 
<laughs> we got corn. Felt like only seconds. It felt like it just went by like that. <laughs> it did. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. Blink and you miss it. We've learned some interesting things here. We still have corn yeah. and Pharos. They have their own stuff going on. And then, of course, Aurelius is still waiting for this drop. What are we doing here? Um, you will see, uh, Corrin had left the, uh, the opera house in her ceremonial wear, which was kind of like a black cat suit. And at the hip was this flowy fabric, uh, sword at her side. And she had like a, a scarf around her neck. Um, but she'll gently remove the fabric that was at her hip. And when she removes it and like, uh, it, it expands and it's a reversible cape. Like, so the outside is a, like a non distinct black cape that she wears over to conceal her sword and what she's wearing. And then she'll take her scarf and cover her hair. Um, she would like to go out into more of like a merchant area, mm-hmm. somewhere where there's like a lot of hustle and bustle, where she could speak to some of the uh, people who trade in wares and. Um, the, the general uh, commerce of the area to see if she could reach her contacts and ask about any new uh, or suspicious behavior in both House Tyloris and House Harkonnen. Okay. Do you have Fremen contacts that you feel safe going after or are you going through other intermediaries? Uh, I would go through a Fremen contact, uh, one in particular that... Um, is is both trusted amongst the Fremen and trusted amongst the houses in uh, in business that they would know. But they're being a Fremen is uh, they would be obviously more loyal towards the Fremen, and so I would trust their information. Now we talked a little bit about this in episode one. You uh, there are some like Deso Ren that think you're this. Uh, you know, expatriate uh, Fremen that was ousted mm-hmm. and and shunned for so taking a role. So maybe there's like a, a underground a expat com- community. <laughs> and they're all you're all cool. Like this is what you do. And you yeah. you had made mention that like there is a circle of you that are there. You're doing this for very specific reasons. Now obviously yes. it seems like you caught feelings here and you have your other motives, uh, your other relationships with the Duchess, but. But there is uh, the Benny Gesserit from her from her childhood and from her upbringing. Uh, Corin would strongly believe that she is there for a greater purpose, even if she doesn't know what that is. Okay, it's not uncommon to see Fremen walking the streets here, um, and uh, so you are able to uh, do the same. Are you wearing your still suit, or you're just? Uh, it's it's concealed by I have kind of too like I have like my my like utility still suit thing that I wear and then I have something that's a little more ceremonial looking right uh, I'm wearing the more ceremonial outfit right you're now you're going out still suit that yes. uh, <laughs> on the town my fancy suit. one yeah all right Ooh. let me uh, I'm gonna have the you do move as well <laughs> because I know you have a focus in stealth and you're you're obviously not you're hiding in plain sight but let's do move and then <laughs> You tell me. I, I I think you could make a case for any of these, especially where you're trying to contact one of your Fremen people. I mean, even faith could come into it. Duty, yeah. justice. What do you think? I think her faith would be driving a lot of this because even though Corin doesn't understand what's happening, she feels like if she's strong in her faith, she will be led to the right answers. Okay, I love it. So move faith. And what is your faith drive? Um, my faith gives me certainty where others might doubt. My faith gives me certainty where others might doubt. I, I think there's no reason that can't work here, you know? This is a dangerous thing, but you believe that you're being guided by, uh, you know, the power of Shai Halud. You will be protected um, by his all-seeing eye to find, and be able to talk to your people. Is, yeah. Yeah. And then her move is stealth. Right. So you're going to get the focus as well. Uh, I'm going to make this difficulty two, but I'm going to spend a threat to move it up to difficulty three. Because okay. I haven't spent threat yet, and I think it's fun. All right. Um, and I don't think I have anything to spend either. So it's just, okay. it's just those two. 
<laughs> I rolled a two, but I also rolled a nat 20. Oh, okay. oh no. All right, so that's two successes uh, out of a necessary three and a complication. <sighs> now, do you have determination or no? I don't believe so. I think I spent it. Okay. Oh boy. Oh All right. no, I don't so, like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So you're walking through the streets and you feel very confident at first. No one is paying any attention to you. But as you get closer and closer to the place where you know you're from in contact is, you get this very uneasy feeling. This very uneasy feeling of not feeling safe, which isn't something you probably feel a lot. You're so confident in your ability. You're confident in your ability to protect the Duchess, to protect House Houdin. Obviously, you're exposed right now, but some, my danger sense didn't go off. It's, yeah, yeah it's something is something is awry as you arrive at your contact and. He looks at you and is Corin your Fremen name? Yes. Yes. And he's like, Corin, what are you doing here? The whole town is after you and your house. There's some, we've been framed. I'm just trying to find out what happened. Do you know anything? Do you know anything of House Tyloris? House Harkonnen, has there been any changes in the business dealings? Has anything changed at all that might be suspicious? The Harkonnens are animals. Their dealings are always the same. I have heard nothing special about them. Tyloris saw the word was about this wedding that was to take place between your Duchess and their soon-to-be Duke. Well, their soon-to-be Duke was poisoned. That is what I hear. No, poisoning is not our way. But could it be someone in your house? Do you trust everyone under your duchess's eye? I trust my duchess, and so I do trust that it was not one of us. Do you know anything of this Thurman Tyloris? Yes, I do. There was word that he was attempting to contact Fremen to help him with some underhanded operation. He was denied by them. I think he wanted use of their ornithopter. At the same time, a Tylorus ornithopter was found missing not but a few days later and the pilots were found dead and stripped of their clothing has the has there been any retaliation any no this all happened it may not even be related but it does seem strange that this brother was looking for Fremen help merely to get use of their thopter. And then, not but a couple days later, a thopter was stolen and the riders killed. Well, I think this will prove to be useful. I still think he has the most to gain from this. Is there anything else? You. That you could think of? You don't... You don't look well. Are you all right? I'm... I'm fine. I took a little... Took a little hit earlier. I'm all right. Let me see the wound. There's something in your eyes. Do I trust what he's saying? (laughs) Yeah, you trust this guy. Okay. You obviously feel uneasy, but you trust him. I'll take a quick glance around and I'll show him. And his eyes like bug out. He's like, this is a horrible infection. 
I could see it in your face. You need attention and fast. But I cannot give it to you. It is not safe here. Please make sure you take care of that wound. Is there someone I can go to? No, we're safe. Especially if the Tyloris family is getting involved in Fremen affairs. I'm your last hope. Thank you. Please be safe, Corin. Till we meet again. And just kind of and bounce out. <laughs> and that is your complication. The new trait. Infection. Oh no. Great. Love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Wow. Oh, so sorry. It's all because I said they should get initiative. <laughs> <laughs> but find out some more inf- interesting information. So yeah. Aurelius is looking into House Tyloris. Maybe this will help with whatever he finds. Um, and then uh, Delessa found out about the Sardukar, didn't leave with uh, the Guild Navigator. And then also this abomination is here on Arrakis. And then we'll switch gears to Pharos. Great. Pharos, talking to me what you're, about what you're doing. Well, first, I just want to by way of preamble, just see the adjudicator like um, tied to a chair, this time of his own choice. <laughs> As like stro- strobe lights are <laughs> across and like two or three courtesans are like whispering in his ear and like cracking ampules of like green gas under his nose that he's like <laughs> inhaling. And in the shadows, he sees like just in the strobe, like Ferris's Ferris like sleepy eyes watching. <laughs> And then it goes dark, and when it, when the orange purple light hits again, it's like a entirely different person watching him. And then that person is like just an old Fremen man walking down the street through the market stalls <laughs> as he makes his way uh, to a place where Pharos can meet with the uh, the Laksu contact that he sometimes meets with. Or they sometimes meet with. And I think that would be um, at a uh, let's say by the port. Like, like you hear the roars of spacecraft and the buzz of ornithopters overhead. And maybe in like a next to a like a, a packing container is like um, suspensored off of a off of a ship, um, just like uh, gives a and like door panel opens, walks inside. Just another worker, seeing who what what they can unload. Yeah, I mean, you of all people can move around the easiest <laughs> throughout yeah. Arrakis. Um, do you have to spend momentum to face change? I think so. Do yeah. I have to? Yeah, let's let's do it. Do yeah, we have any two spend? Uh, you can give threat. We'll say so. You can. Let's give, say I did that. Give one <laughs> threat. Oh, give, give me. Give me. Enjoy. Give me. God, this is gonna come to bite you. Oh, oh, this boy, is good. Set up the good cliffhanger. Uh, I was gonna be able to buy a car. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Outright a new with car. this threat after this. Uh, so let me ask you this: If Ferris is a spy for House Houdin, one would assume he was a spy before he came to House Sudan, or at least involved in in dark dealings. Do you think he was like part of assassinations? Was he a part of like kill squads for the Bene Tleilax? Uh, like was this like this dark thieves guild? Yeah, let's say, I mean, this would be the kind of thing where like, um, uh, like maybe 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 something like a like a spice smuggling operation was getting that the Tleilaks who were benefiting from were getting cracked down on by like a functionary of a lesser house and then one day the that that like functionary's bodyguard just turns around and cuts his throat as the as the face they've trusted for so long just reorients into it's it's yeah I think there was a, a life preceding this before he received a more permanent employment. Yeah, so maybe before you came to Arrakis, there was some group 
that you worked with mm-hmm. that had their hands in uh, all sort of areas, perhaps some shadowy cabal, and you Great. never quite knew who was in charge, some unknown benefactor, and perhaps even, and you'd stop me if I'm uh, giving you too much, but this was the same group that gave you to House Huden. Yes. What do you think they got in return? Um, what do you th- what do you think uh, House Huden got in return? No, what did this your group that gave you away get um, in return? P- part of part of the, I think what they got in return was having me there as yeah. a as a um, double agent as a double agent. Um, and I, I think I'm just supposed to be siphoning up all all secrets. Oh, but that's the thing though that like they would have had to actually demand some price up front or else because otherwise uh, for Huden's on Huden's side perspective why do they want you there like the only reason exactly. that was to, like you know could have been so there would, show, have, to be, uh, there would yeah. have to be like a price tag like an addition to, to that right you know? right I mean in my in my head it was like have you, you've said that like the pair uh, I don't I don't want to write uh, anyone's story for them maybe someone in the house was maybe someone in the house died and they couldn't let it come out um so like like it would have un- wrecked public perception enough to where they needed a replacement and there's only one place you can go for something like that oh so the person that held your position before or someone because my father was killed with a poison snooper um maybe we're trying to bring him back yeah, I, well, they, I think they might have, like, I mean, if that's the, I mean, <laughs> it could have been like, sure, have this person with you for however long, and we'll bring your dad back. But I, maybe it's, it might be more likely that, like, maybe your dad, unbeknownst to you, uh, had, had an illness that he recovered from when you were a little girl. But your dad never recovered from that illness. Oh, the man oh, that yeah. you thought was your father was one of us. Yeah, for like the good. back half of his life. Yeah, oh, I love this. That's Your really family good. has been, they've had a deal with these Bene Tleilax for mm-hmm. a long time, and then you just sort of inherited Pharos. I love and it's like, this. Really it's good. a family secret that. that like, uh, that one day you get brought in like, uh, the, uh, the the assistant stage manager is a little different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I think it's it's that sort of thing. That I was conditional like conditional of the actual payment. It was like put someone into the house and you will have your sire back. This is great. I mean it also makes it clear why like the adjudicator would know. This has been a rumor for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, how student? They've got a Bene Tleilax in there. I just know it. Yeah. Somewhere It's like in becoming there. president. And they're like, there are actually aliens. Now that right. you're here, we can tell you about the aliens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys know there's aliens? <laughs> uh, so you walk into this dark room, and there's just a, a, a blanket of smoke in the air, purple lights. And uh, there is this creature, small creature like laying in the back and there's maybe a couple other people draped over this man and he sees you come in and just shoes them away and as this man sits up he like goes through the same facial changes that you go through and all of a sudden you see this beautiful Fremen woman and then he kind of shakes his head a few times and he becomes a man that looks exactly like the person that you're presenting and then shakes his head again and just looks like nobody. Mm-hmm. Ferris. And I want to make, make it clear that like this whole conversation is taking place in the Tleilaxu whistling language. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so to someone outside, it's... <laughs> so creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like faceless um, stalkers. That's great. Uh, and he just greets you, Pharos, and smiles. Scythia. You must have heard there's a great, a great many doings around House Sudan of late. Yes, it appears you have got yourself tied up in a bad situation. It may be time to extract you 
Ferris, the Bene Tleilach's time with House Houdin may be coming to an end. Such a shame. Don't be so sure that the decline is irrevocable. For everything you heard may not be the case. It is given out that our Duchess plotted to poison the young heir she was to marry. But I am here to tell you that none of that is true. The house has been framed. The house, it seems, has been put under a vendetta to be destroyed, absorbed, or otherwise tamed. Well, we do not, I, we yes. do not know who has done this. While I appreciate you telling me all of this, did you tell this to the adjudicator that you kidnapped? It will do far more to him than it will to me. You need not prove your innocence to me, Pharos. We go back a long, long time. Innocence is relevant, and I don't believe that that particular epithet could be hung over either of our heads at this point. But I assure you, a very strong case is being pressed on the adjudicator even as we speak. Why have you come here? <laughs> Pleasantries? For so oh. long, my friend, this has been a one-way street. I tell you of the doings of Houdan, but now I need something from you in order to fit the pieces of a puzzle which are laid out before me that I cannot see my way to completing. Who has done this? Asudan has enemies. There are players on the board who would seek its destruction. All we need to know is who and why. Who is responsible for this assassination, Scythia? Hmm. If I knew, I could share that information for a great sum of money. But I have thought on this ever since word traveled to my ears. You know you're not the only one here on Arrakis that answers to me. I know it well. I was surprised to find one of our friends in the Tyloris household. <laughs> Ah, yes. So that is why you have come. Yes. Most curious to see the metal eyes and the flesh of the axolotl tanks walking here on Arrakis. Who is well, this? Perhaps the truth lies in the answer. This Gola is one of many here on Arrakis. Our establishment, Pharos. We have killed many, mostly in the name of justice, sometimes for sport, but always for a purpose. There is blood on your hands as well as mine, but I am not here to pass judgment. I am here to give you the information you seek. According to my sources, one of the men we killed was a souk doctor named Silex Niles. Hmm. Bless you. You'll have to watch that. The air so here is very smoke. dry. <laughs> Every time he sneezes, his face changes again. Yeah. <laughs> now he looks like Bugs Bunny. Amazing. <laughs> Silex Niles, yes. He was one of the ones we were instructed to kill. Not for me. What, for what reason? I didn't know until recently, and honestly, I'm still trying to discern it. But let me ask you this. Did you see the faces of all those you killed? Or all those you had a hand in their death? I can still... 
And maybe, to, and uh, maybe, <laughs> I don't want to spend. Uh, no, don't spend any more threat. For initiatives. Do you, do you yeah, like yeah. to spend threat, Flavius? No, no, no. I won't. I won't spend <laughs> threat to make a point. But um, <laughs> yeah. yes, I can. I can still see them. They're all right here. So he indicates his face. Hmm. Although perhaps it's possible that you killed this man and he never saw you. How ironic that would be, as so many that you wiped out never saw your true face. Whoever it was that shed their blood, there are several men and women, just like this Souk Doctor Niles, that we have been ordered to kill. These specialists, shall we call them, were not tied to any house. But over the span of a year, we were instructed to eliminate them. And their killers were conveniently never found. A few years later, these people began returning to life, as it were, as golas, placed in various menial positions throughout the noble houses of the Landrad. It always bothered me, not so much that I would ask anyone, but always nagged at the back of my head, why would we bring back these golas without any of their original skills? We could make them in any way we desired. Warriors, mentats, even the Souk doctor. Why make him a simple accountant? Perhaps, perhaps now I know why. There was a rumor, one I did not believe at first, but your presence here has solidified it in my mind that these golas are sleeper agents. Mm. Just <laughs> waiting to be unlocked. And that is why they are all here on Arrakis. Because once that occurs, their true powers will bubble to the surface. But here's the thing, Pharos. To what end? I know not. But let me ask you this. Why would someone hide Souk doctors, mentats, warriors in all of these positions without any of their powers? Perhaps in the case of Mr. Niles, where a Souk doctor is conditioned to never betray their house. A gola with those powers hidden deep within them could. Do anything to anyone. Yes. But why? And who? I do not know. It is not my job to ask questions. It is my job to ask, but it is not my job to know. Know necessarily the full picture when it is all placed before me. But you brought me one step closer, and for that I thank you. Tread carefully. May I ask, when this Gola saw you, what did he say? He said he thought he found me familiar. Yes, perhaps those metal eyes can see more than they let on. And perhaps my memory is not so good as I thought it was. Find out who Fane is really working for and you'll find your killer. <laughs> to you as well. <laughs> can, a, can a face dancer also be a gola? Or do they have to be one or the other? I think it's two separate things. Okay. That'd be fun. That'd be messed up too. <laughs> the metal eyes are a giveaway. It's true. <laughs> so, 
you've got a lot of information now. Um, it's kind of all over the place. I don't know how much of it is helpful. Let's say you all reconvene mm. back at the uh, basement of the Pleasure House, where Ferris's courtesan friend has allowed you to stay. When you get back, you notice that uh, Corin really doesn't look well. And Aurelius, you have to go get a drop sometime in the next day. Are there mechanics we can use to heal her? her? This is just now a trait. Yeah, so you can roll to aid to remove the trait. Um, um, how does my rapid recovery come into play? Ooh, talk to me about this. rapid recovery. So rapid recovery. Um, says you, you return to fighting form quickly after being injured even when it may be risky to return to the fray once per scene at the start of your turn you may add plus two to threat to remove a complication which represents an injury in addition you may uh pay to resist defeat uh one additional time during a conflict all right well here's what i'll say you can uh you can spend two threat to remove this infection if you want, where it, where it was the result of a complication. Um, or uh, one of you can roll a skill test against difficulty two, and if you pass, you can remove the trait. Um, there's some risk reward to that, obviously, because you might be able to build some momentum, but you also might create a further complication, which in this case would be fun. <laughs> Maybe in the meantime, yeah, while we for, you. <laughs> for me, just just for me. <laughs> and the viewers. And the viewers. Uh, Maybe not the, so much for me. Maybe the housemaids of this pleasure house have brought down some cots for us and some creature comforts. Perhaps a so, first aid kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and Corin, maybe if you're lying down, then I'm sort of just tending to your comfort uh, superficially. If it's a pleasure house, they've got to at least have some penicillin. Yeah, yeah. there'd be some, yeah. some health care that's, that's discreet. Yeah. Uh, unless and Corin's conflicted because her pride doesn't want to have her admit that she's injured, but she likes mm -hmm. the attention uh, <laughs> from Lady Delessa. <laughs> so she might be like, oh, uh, it hurts so bad. Uh, it's like Sorry. Phantom Thread. Just my back, yes. that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I must protect you. <laughs> no, it is I who will protect you on this night. <laughs> and I blot your forehead with a, a I mean, wet towel. Your dad, everyone's a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> it is our way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can roll a check to try and remove the trait if you'd like. It's against difficulty to, um, you know, I, discipline, <laughs> battle, if you're treating a battle wound, I, whatever you want to do, honestly. Uh, who is rolling this? Uh, I'm happy to. I would love to try and heal you. I Good don't know if I have any particular skill in it. If uh, perhaps someone else does. This was uh, this. Was my other option was to be a souk doctor, and I wish I had taken that. Right <laughs> now. In this moment, yes. Call up Silex now. We'll see if you can. Uh, I know I, someone I know. with the training. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know a Ooh. golem that has that mm -hmm. skill. I... Okay, here's uh, what I'm thinking. I uh, would like to use faith. My faith in yep. my care for Corin, and understand because I took the focus of physical empathy. Ah, That's perfect. right. Love Which it. Which had a different meaning when you first uh, were like, hey. <laughs> I know what you want. <laughs> yeah, I love it. what your physical being needs to be well. Um, okay. So they're not very high together. That's only an eight. But if I roll below, four below, that'll be two hits. Yep. And we'll say if you succeed, the trait's removed. If you don't, it's going to fester. And it's not oh, no. something you like, can roll again. And if it's a complication, we'll talk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, maybe instead of faith, because that's not my thing. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, we go for justice, because my statement is I will protect those in my care. Hey, that's, oh, okay. That oh, works. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay. Bump it up a couple points. So still only four and below to case. get the focus, um, but together that's an 11 or below. Okay. A little less than a 50-50. Uh, oh, how many successes do I need? Uh, two. Okay. Difficulty two to remove a, a trait from a wounded ally. Meanwhile, I'm just hamming it up. It's <laughs> <laughs> 
Troy, I don't know what you are to do with this, but I have rolled a natural 20 and a natural one. Oh. That's what I rolled to get my thing. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, so <laughs> you're immediately healed and your head falls off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. Like the red ribbon. <laughs> yeah, your, your infection is healed and you die of a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you die of joy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, this is kind of amazing. So you, you are able to, to remove the infection. You succeeded on removing the infection. But man, that natural 20. If you had failed, it's easy. It's just, you get really, really sick. It's like sepsis. Um, but here, you're able to, to remove the trait infected. That happened. I'm going to think on the complication. All right. Okay. okay. As, as you're thinking, I'm just going to... Oh, my lady. I don't know whether it is your healing word or your gentle touch, but I feel so much better already. Por que no los dos? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Let us leave Walter's them. name. Yes, I feel weird watching this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you prefer some privacy, Your Grace. Yes, it's not only your face that is dancing. Yes. I actually imagine a moment as you're uh, treating the wound, um, and Corin is is hamming up, hamming it up for you. You're treating the wound, and you look up at Corin, and you go back to the wound. And then you look up again, and it's Dresden lying there. <gasps> no. Um, I, I hide my face and I turn away from her. What, what's the matter? You, you weren't you. I am what? being haunted. We must find out who killed this boy. Not only has it brought shame upon our house and disgrace, but he died for nothing. Or maybe some fault of ours. It was no fault of yours. We will find out who has plotted against you. Perhaps it was. I've done many things to better our house that not particularly prideful to share. You did what was necessary. I believe I did. So you're all sitting there. Corin's starting to get her color back in her face. And you're sharing the details that you learned. I don't know how much Ferris is sharing, um, but you do know that the brother, Thurman Tyloris, starting to get into the spice smuggling game, mm -hmm. was looking to get an ornithopter from some local Fremen. They turned him away. A couple days later, uh, a thopter from House Tyloris goes missing and the guards are found uh, dead and stripped of their clothes. You find out that the Bene Gesserit, oh, good, Becca? The guards were Fremen or Tyloris? They were House Tyloris guards. Okay. Uh, the Bene Gesserit uh, have heard this rumor of a while of uh, a woman that has been, a sister that has been possessed by the other voice, the other memory, uh, not only exists, but is now here in Arrakis somewhere in the desert. To what end? You don't know. And also, the Sard Sardaukar soldiers that accompanied the Space Guild navigator did not return with him. And that's a point of interest. And there is a theory that the filthy Tleilaxu, when they bring the flesh back to life, can imprint upon it right upon it, if you will. Whatsoever directives they deem are in their interests. So there is a chance that some latent ability or directive could have been unlocked in our resurrected friend, Mr. Fane. And so, yeah, at least Pharos, you know that there are likely several Gola yeah. 
here on Arrakis that are sleeper agents with great power just waiting to be unlocked. Ferris, are you saying that this Ilgar Fane may have a master other than House Tyloris? I do. But who that is and what their motives are, I cannot say. Simply the Tilaxu, or perhaps an individual? It may be either. I am by no means an expert, but some... The Tilaxu answer to their masters, who answer to their masters. And it may be that he who wields the knife knows not the will of those that sent him. In asking questions, we've only found more questions. I'm tempted to propose that we find this so-called abomination, but I have angered the sisterhood enough. Who knows if that would be wise? Fine. It would take us out of the heat of the city and place us in the more literal heat of the desert. Mm. Ah. Out of the frying pan into the air fryer, so to speak. And if you continue to threaten the the safety of your courtesan friend. No. And if you were not simply to make contact, but to bring in this, uh, and a Jesuit abomination, perhaps your sisters would see it as a boon rather than as a betrayal. Perhaps after, so. Uh, after I a, might... an interview could be conducted, of course. An interview of which we were are all skilled. I glance around the group. We are lucky enough to have someone here who knows the ways of the desert, do we not? I always said that I would protect you. And in the desert is no different. Thank you. The final question is why would Thurman be interested in killing his nephew if his real goals were to earn earn funds as a spice smuggler. I mean, he would abandon his house altogether were he to become successful in that regard. Perhaps his nephew knew what he was doing, and in his newfound position of power could have brought justice to bear upon his wayward uncle. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Perhaps those with an interest in a side business of spice would want to keep the illicit thread flowing. An honorable young lad may have wished to cease all illegal activity in his house if he knew of it. Hmm. Again, just questions, creating more questions. Like the Sadakar, do they hunt us? Or do they have some other purpose? The knowledge of their presence here is certainly troubling. Well, the presence alone is enough to cause me uh, tremendous worry for your safety and for the rest of us. Your yes. Yes. We'll yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I know, I know. It's 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 so. <laughs> it, yeah, every every answer yielded another puzzle. Yeah, yeah. I only um, have more questions. Yeah. Luckily, Aurelius has a friend. I do. A friend named Kyla Breach. And so the lights fade out on this scene. And it's the next day. It's hot. It's uncomfortable out. And we see Aurelius de Grom walking through the streets to get to his drop. Reaches the drop. Picks it up. Goes down an alleyway, maybe, to read it and you learn some interesting information. You see drawings of schematics, of ways to 
repurpose some of House Houdin's backstage machinery into a spice operation. <laughs> you see a map to some place deep within the desert over the shield wall. And there are notes that apparently Thurman Tyloris is about to leave the city in a hurry. It is unclear if anyone is accompanying him or where he's even going. But the rumors seem to be true that among his many vices, he has started up a smuggling operation and he is transporting cargo from Arrakis, either off world onto a Highliner or somewhere deep into the desert. It's not clear. Your contact, Kyla, posits like, she leaves a note like, is he using this tumultuous time to further his dark dealings? Or did he have a murder or, or have a hand in the murder and uh, subsequent setup? Ornithopter has gone missing. Yes. Sardaukar soldiers are here. There is a Bene Gesserit abomination somewhere within the desert. Thurman Tyloris has set up a smuggling operation and perhaps was looking to use House Tyloris' opera house as a front for that operation and is now transporting cargo off-world or deeper into the desert. You have an ornithopter. Yep. What do you want to do? Uh, so yeah, I'm. I hurry back, still in disguise. I go back to the pleasure house, and as I, gives me no pleasure to relay this news, your grace. But I fear we must head deeper into the desert to your, uh, your, your, uh, your territory. Uh, I, I. I think that our quarry may may be there now. And I show the the schematics and I lay out, you know, this Thurman like he seems to be using our stuff. So this is this is the implication is that it's it's his doing that he's trying to use adapt our machinery to process spice rather than like Harkonnen trying to take all of our stuff and making it useful to them by like uh adapting our, our machinery to add to their own spice refining operation is that what i'm to believe yeah the 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 gist you get now if, if this is all true is like the harkonnens would just capitalize on this like oh that house fell great we'll take over the opera house we'll make more money uh directly than just getting a tithe yeah, they don't um, need our to use our our set design stuff mm, to make spice. no it seems like Ty tyloris now has a strong motive for this all right but by all accounts he loved his nephew Yes. Well, whether or not he is, he can be implicated in the death of his beloved nephew, if we can expose his wrongdoing at the source, we will have some leverage. Perhaps it will lead us somewhere uh, more useful. This is. It seems exciting. the time for us to impose upon our friends here in this luscious institution has come to an end. Let us enter the ornithopter and head into the desert of arrakis in search of thurman yeah. and i think that um we should pass word upstairs to just drug uh, our friend as much as possible unger Trello. Keep drugging and unger. uh Keep when he happy. awakes from this like week-long stupor this bender <laughs> he'll realize he's free to go and he'll probably be so ashamed that he stayed much longer than he had to that oh, he yeah will yes. play it off when he Take, finds make Benton. oil paintings of everything oh yes to blackmail yeah. him with uh -huh. <laughs> yes yeah. Leave a couple dead courtesans next to him, uh, <laughs> like the senator and Godfather too. <laughs> she was laughing. I, know she was, I remember she was laughing. It's all right, senator. We'll take care of this. I would uh, never do such a thing to a courtesan. I no, just like we, it to be known. No. We treat it's them just, with respect. Let the word be known. We'll find yes, one yes. that died of natural causes and put there it. There we go. There we go. Perfect. 
It all worked out. Uh, a heart oh. attack upon learning that she, her infection was gone. Perhaps. Yeah, we gave her the infection. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. yeah, that's the complication. No, actually, I know what the complication is. So you all pile in to Aurelius de Grum's personal ornithopter. We'll say it's a four-seater. And uh, I've been keeping it secret, too. Like, this is not, like, widely known. Like, I've been so keeping you, it stashed in, like, a secret, like, space and everything. You is throw it the tarp equipped off of with it? extra yeah. still suits? Yes. yes. Right? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Just give me nine threat and you can have it. No, uh, <laughs> yes. You can't go into the desert without still suits. It's just, uh, there's it no sad. reason you wouldn't have those. And obviously, yeah. uh, Corin has one of, of Fremen make, higher quality. And so you pull the tarp off and uh, you all marvel at this. And the next shot is the thopter rising up and going over the shield wall into the desert, following a hand-drawn map in the middle of nowhere. And the complication is Uh suddenly a massive sandstorm hits. Oh. <laughs> and the entire thopter Go up above it! <laughs> starts to go down. No! And we'll see you next week. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Troy, why? <laughs> one thing that I didn't watch. Welcome to the desert! Desert <laughs> Infection <laughs> Games! Yes. Wow. I'll take the infection! Man, that was a terrible infection. <laughs> oh, sandstorm. Yes. <laughs> And oh, I just want to say, uh, before we left, yeah, Pharaoh uh, slid like a little leather case over to the courtesan and pops open. It's just vials of spice, alternating vials of spice and water. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> Remember who your friends are. Oh, that poor adjudicator. <laughs> Show him the time of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. I think we've got a fun uh, finale coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm excited. <sighs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>